Good morning, everyone. Happy third Sunday of Lent as we continue to journey along this journey uh, during this Lenten season and prepare ourselves for the joy and the glory of Easter. And as we get closer, we're going to notice that these readings really are going to get very beautiful, uh, very sometimes a little bit longer readings, but there are certainly readings that are a, a blessing to us and very rich in their theology and and speak to us about the very essence of our faith and what we believe. So let us look at our reading for today. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area, with the sheep and the oxen, spilling the coins of the money changers and overturning their tables. And to those he sold doves, he said, Take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, You show... Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up on the third day. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they came to believe in the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. When they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all. And he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They have a beautiful Gospel today. Uh, of course, Jesus is journeying on his way to Jerusalem and his fate, right? You know, so he knows clearly what is he's facing here. Um, he is both God and man. You know, he, he understands as God and he submitted himself um, to his human nature, and so he submitted himself, uh, obviously, to some sort of um, confu confusion and also understanding gradually of what is his goal and what his God has for, and planned for him. And that is, of course, to go up to Jerusalem, and he, he knows there what will await him, that he will make that final sacrifice for each one of us. And so in today's Gospel, as we get closer to Easter, we see that Jesus um, reveals himself with the cleansing of the temple. Now, if we think back to our own lives, trying to look practically at, at our own lives and how, how things have gone in our life, we, we were probably raised in families where we had different chores and so forth to do. Traditionally, children would take up some sort of family chores at some point. You know, first of all, usually it starts out in kindergarten and so forth with clean up your toys. And um, then it, it progresses, then as you get a little bit older, eight, nine, ten years old, you are asked to take some part in the family, whether it be to take out the trash, you know, try to help mom and dad clean up, you know, take care of your stuff, but then also maybe help out with some of the other things that are taking place in family. As with my own particular family, as I'm sure it was the case with you, we had our chores to do, and um, those chores had to do with the whole family. Uh, folding clothes, etc., but also with us individually and, and any mess that we particularly made. And I remember sometimes it would be every every couple Saturday or something we would have that we would have to have our parents kind of round us up and you know tell us, okay, you know you've slipped again. And that was the, you know sort of human nature that, especially for kids, you kind of slip out of these patterns of taking care of your your roles and your chores, and you need to be refocused. And so my parents would say is. It's your responsibility, and you're a part of this family to take part and to play a part in this family. 
clean up after yourselves, right? <clears throat> your parents are not your slaves. We're not, we love you, but we're not here to take care of you. And, you know, it's important that you learn this responsibility. And good parents teach this sort of responsibility and consequences to their kids. Why? Because it's the best to learn when you're younger about these things. When we get older, if we haven't learned these important lessons about responsibility, then it's going to be really much harder for us, you know, to learn those when you get older. It's, it's, it really is teaching us something really important. And so we see, and if we want to kind of apply this symbolically, if we see this in our the gospel today, that Jesus himself has to sort of correct, you know, the, the people um, who are there in the temple area. Today, Jesus cleanses the temple. This is a typical passage which most Christians would know. The money changers are in the temple area. And the idea was that they would be in the temple, of course, up until the the temple was destroyed, there was there was animal sacrifice. And of course, our sacrifices that we understand in the Eucharist, um, what, it has its origin in the sacrifices of the Jewish priesthood, you know. So it very much is connected in many ways. <clears throat> But they would have animal sacrifice, they would also have sacrifices of food, just like we do with the bread and the wine. But they they would also obviously have to sell those. It was somehow people of the poor, especially who were traveling from different places, would have to take some time to buy some of the these animals that needed to be sacrificed. And sometimes, you know, they would sell sell them animals that were sick, or you know, they would take advantage of the poor. And uh, fix the weights, you know, so that when they put uh, the animal or whatever on on a scale, it did not uh, weigh its proper show its proper weight, and so the the, the poor, who are uneducated, would be taken advantage of. So some of these things are some of the things that Jesus is dealing with in today's gospel that underline that we wouldn't necessarily know unless we studied a little bit. So many things are going on in God's house in the temple. Uh, that should not be that need to be corrected and so it's time for for Jesus to sort of say all right uh, let's straighten some things out and I'm going to make this point as I journey to Jerusalem and to the crucifixion Jesus makes a cord and he takes it out and he literally drives them out you know with a whip <laughs> he turns over tables he's furious okay but righteous anger of course it's not a sin on his part <clears throat> overturning tables, etc., making a scene, really. And the purpose was to make a scene to get people's attention. This is both real and it is also symbolic of cleansing the temple and preparing for the new coming, which will be his own sacrifice, one sacrifice for each one of us. For many of us, this side of Jesus is sort of something, wow, I, you know, I, I'm not really used to seeing that, or at least the picture of Jesus that we have. We may think of our consoling Lord, but in this righteous anger that we see in correction, maybe sometimes that's a little bit challenging for us to accept or to hear. There must be, we always have to look at a whole picture, of course, of the sacred scriptures of the Old Testament, of the New Testament, and all the Gospels, right? The whole picture of Jesus, and then, of course, uh, what his apostles would then preach to the people, St. Paul, etc., would pray, preach to the people. All of this has to be looked within a context and, and seen in a whole context, okay? And this is really important. We can't put Jesus into this box, right? He's a really nice guy and he's nice to everyone and loving to everyone by our standards. Or, you know, he's like, he is always fire and brimstone, you know? And again, though he doesn't, God doesn't fit into these boxes that we that we make as human beings, sort of to make ourselves understand life and make ourselves comfortable with life. Jesus is always kind of going outside that box, and he can't fit God, of course, who created everything into a box. Jesus comforts the afflicted, but he also afflicts the comfortable. All right, so both of those things go on: the comforting of the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. He eats with tax collectors and sinners, as we know from the previous scripture passages. And he's also, he's also willing to stand right in front of some, a woman who's going to be stoned because she's committed adultery. And he says, but he says to that woman afterwards, go and sin no more. So he doesn't advocate sinful behavior. He came, he said, not to abolish the Ten Commandments. Some people 
you know, today they don't agree with the Ten Commandments, so it's, that's fine, that's up to you. But at the same time, Jesus says himself that he did not come to abolish those Ten Commandments, but to fulfill them, that he brings them to fulfillment. And where do we see that? Well, let's for, look, for example, at when the Sermon on the Mount, when he speaks about adultery, all right? We all know adultery is a sin and one of the Ten Commandments, but Jesus says, you've heard it said that if those who commit adultery, you know, will be punished, it's a serious sin. But I say to you that even looking at someone with lust is committing adultery in your heart. So Jesus is, in a sense, raising the bar. So we can't say that Jesus, um, you know, took away as is, is, is opposed to the law and, and that his love doesn't encompass the law. But really, love, in, in the sense of Christianity, has to do with all these things, but in a balanced way, of course. For us, Christianity is not always going to be comfortable. No, sometimes we know Christianity is very comfortable for us. You know, when we're able to receive forgiveness for our sins and the sacrament of reconciliation. When we're able to, um, you know, hear the gospel and, and how Jesus loves the poor and has a preferential love for the poor. But at the same time, it makes us feel uncomfortable too. And if it doesn't, maybe we're not really engaging Christianity. Because Christianity is not going to make us feel comfortable. Uh, it does not. It does comfort us. Sometimes it can be very, very challenging for us. Imagine just the, the teaching on forgiveness of sins, for us forgiving others. That is going to challenge you and I throughout our life, and we're going to struggle with it. And for many other people, there's other aspects of our church's teaching and of Christianity that they're going to struggle with. That's okay. Um, you know, it's okay to struggle, but at the same time, we have to realize that it's we can't change you know god god is a sense always other and he is beyond our expectations and we as human beings certainly as adam and eve tried to do we don't determine what's right and what's wrong it calls us to repentance each and every day and that's what it does for me that's what it does for you it's not going to be something that in this life is totally comforting only with god's grace can we become holy just we need to accept the fact that Jesus is both consoling and loving and that he is that gentle voice, that beautiful voice that we'll hear one day with God's help as we enter into heaven. But he's also that voice which at times corrects us and, and calls us to be more like him. And the point is to be more like him. Christianity is a relationship. It's a relationship. So it's going to be struggles sometimes. It's not going to be easy. God just doesn't say to you, you know, admit your, your sins and accept me as your personal Savior, and, and that's it, you know. No, he wants us to be holy, and, and he wants us to grow in that relationship with him. And, and that's going to challenge us. So maybe we help each other on this road. We're not here to judge other people or to bring them down, but we're all realize that each one of us are struggling, in a sense, struggle at times with different aspects of the faith. And that's going to be the way it is because we're human beings and we tend towards sin by our first fall. But God, may God continue to give us his, his grace, especially during this Lenten season, to work on those areas and allow him, his light to enter in to help us to become more holy and more like him. God bless you all. Uh, we did start our Adoration Chapel this week. Um, we still need to fill in some hours, but we're working on that with sisters and then also with an um, online sign-up sheet as well. We're hoping then to be able to fill in all the hours from 9 to 5 on Fridays and Saturdays. So that'll be our time that those people who are in there will be invited to pray for everybody, for each one of us. All of us need prayer. And they will be invited to pray for each one of us as we journey along together. God bless you.